Uh, it's time to dream, believe, and achieve. I get to lay the foundation each Sunday, and our small groups are going to be diving deeper and taking an incredible journey together during the week. Uh, we have 13 brand new groups, as Josh mentioned, that are starting up, and it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Each week, and I want to tell you this, not to set the bar low for today because I thoroughly enjoyed what we're talking about today, but each week it builds and it just gets better and better. This is a foundation. This is part one. And for people that miss it, if they come back next Sunday and don't watch this sermon, it's like coming in in the middle of a movie and you don't really know what's going on. So encourage all those other cross pointers to catch up by watching the, uh, the on-demand version of this service whenever that they can. Uh, but it's going to get better and better. And again, this is just part one. Are you guys ready for this? All right, let's do it. Let me start by asking, what is the dream? What is the dream? If it's time to dream, we need to figure out what the dream actually is, right? So let's break this down. I've come up with what I believe are, are for this series, three definitions for a dream. And here's the first definition. A dream can be the thoughts and images you have while sleeping, right? We all agree with that. That can also be a nightmare, depending on the context of your dream. We know not all dreams, uh, you know... You, you have while you're sleeping are good. Sometimes we have bad dreams. I've had bad dreams about my wife. Yeah. Um, sometimes I, I wake up and I'm real loving on her, and she knows right away. She's like, okay, what'd you dream? And uh, I say, it wasn't good, but you, I'm glad to see you in the bed with me today. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, it wasn't good what happened last night. But, uh, uh, and she's like, well, maybe the Lord's trying to tell you to be a nicer husband. Seriously, not all dreams you have while sleeping are from God. Sometimes it's just the taco talking, right? But anyway, second definition, a dream can be the desires or the ambitions you have while you're awake. Now look, the dreams that you have with your eyes open are far more important than any dream you'll ever have with your eyes closed. Uh, that's just a fact. Does that make sense to everybody? Uh, you can ignore generally about 99% of the dreams that you have with your eyes closed. Rarely do you ever have to worry about those but the dreams that you have with your eyes wide open, your aspirations, your ambitions, I've always wanted to kind of dreams. You know, I've always had this goal or this passion in my heart. That's more important. Uh, that's the more important dream. No question about it. But guess what? There's still a, another type of dream that's far more important than either one of those. The third definition of a dream, a dream can be the goals and plans that God created you to fulfill. I believe that's, that carries a lot of weight right there. Look, God's plans are far more important in my life than my plans are. And he hasn't promised to bless every dream or aspiration or goal or passion that I, I come up with on my own. Uh, when I was in high school, uh, I planned on becoming an architect. I had already started steering my life that way. When Sylvia and I got married, I was working uh, in that field in Fort Myers, Florida. But one day God said, this isn't my plan for your life. And I gave my notice, and for the next four years, we experienced the most humbling and impoverished season of our lives, trying to live out God's will and his dream uh, for us. And, and we were like, God, what is going on? We know that you've called us to this, but it's not working out very well. And God was like, hang on, I have a plan. You're going to get there. And today, Sylvia and I wouldn't change a thing about the plans uh, that God has had for us or the path that he's placed us on to live in the center of his will. But we both agree, we don't want to go back and start over, okay? We're not about going back and doing it again, but still we wouldn't change a thing because everything that has happened, even the failures, you know you learn more from your failure than you do your success? Even the failures that we've had have launched us into another season uh, for God. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, I know the plans or the dreams that I have for your life. Plans for your good, not plans to harm you. My plans for your life will give you great hope and a wonderful future. You know, they say hindsight is 2020, and that's so true because some of my dreams, if they were coming true, uh, if they had come true, they would have ended in disaster. And I think everybody in the room would agree with that. Some of you thought you were going to marry a certain person. And looking back now, you agree with the great theologian, Garth Brooks. Come on now. Sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayer. I should have queued it up and played it right there. That would have been awesome. Yeah. Uh, God's dream for our lives is so much better than our dream for our lives. And God says that they're for your good. They're, they're going to give you hope and they're going to give you a wonderful future. And I can tell you from experience, God's dream for our lives will always be bigger than our dream for our lives. 
It will always be bigger. How do I know that? Because God promises in Ephesians 3 and 20, God can do anything far more. Somebody say far more. Far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. I love that version from the message. God says, imagine the greatest dream you can come up with for your life. He said, think big and, and blow it up as, as something that would, you know, would be beyond your wildest dreams. He said, I can top that. You come up with whatever you want to, but I can top that, my dream and my will for your life. God's dream for your life will always be bigger than your dream for your life. Not only that, when you follow God's dream for your life, his plan, here's the cool part. He will manipulate the circumstances around you to make it happen. When you're living in the center of his will, if you align your life with God's dream for your life, his plan, his will, he manipulates the circumstances so the dream comes true. Things you couldn't possibly make happen on your own, God will step in and do that. He's done it so many times and blown us away with how he's done it. And then, you know, all of a sudden you realize God was in it. Have you ever had an immeasurably uh, incredible blessing to just fall into your life that caused you to go, wow. I didn't plan on that. I didn't see that coming. I had no idea that that was about to happen. No idea where that come from. I can tell you personally about many, many unexpected blessings that have happened at Cross Point Church, the church collectively, uh, that kept our church moving forward when it looked like the doors were going to close permanently. We thought we were at the end, and all of a sudden, God would open another door, and great things would happen, and he continued to push us forward. And we left, well, we walked away from that saying, wow, God did that. God did that. Over the next six weeks, and I want you to lean into this, please. This is what we're going to be talking about. God has a plan for your life, and here's what my part in this is. I'm going to teach you how to find it and live it by stepping through the doors that God is going to open for you. Okay, you're going to be able to say there's no way that could happen but God. But God. You need to know that God doesn't sponsor flops, failures, and fumbles. If you live in God's plan for your life, success is inevitable. God doesn't underwrite disaster. So when you live in God's dream, his plan, he arranges the circumstances. Now, the Bible says in Revelations 3 and 8, and this is a big scripture for us today, and we're going to come back to it again at the end, but it says, I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. When God gives you a dream, he circumstantially provides the open doors for you to make that dream become a reality. Now, here's the hard part. Here's the hard part for everybody in the room and everybody watching online. You must have the courage to walk through the doors that God opens. You got to have the courage to do it. That's where faith comes in. God will provide an open door, but he will not push, pull, or drag you through it. He opens the door and you got to have faith to walk through it. Too many Christians live in fear when they're called to live in faith and walk in faith. And folks, this is a problem universally today. A lot of Christians are pushing away from their faith and leaning into their fear. But God opens a door and you've got to be man and woman of God enough to walk through the open door that God will reveal to you over the next six weeks. you got to have some backbone if you want to live in the blessing. you just got to. Amen. God is moved by faith. He will open doors. He'll move heaven and earth on your behalf if you walk in faith. Without faith, you will miss God's will, his plan, his dream for your life. We had a, a family meeting. I guess it kind of shocked my family but because uh, I hadn't done this in, in several years, a long time. Uh, but I, I texted the staff. We normally would have a staff meeting on Tuesday morning. I texted the staff and said, no staff meeting today. And it's because of what God was putting in my heart. And I didn't want to throw it on the whole team before I had a chance to talk to my family. So I called Sylvia and Marissa and Josh and Mike in the room. I said, look, I don't want y'all to be blindsided, uh, but I want to tell you straight up. And they knew exactly what I was talking about when I said this. I said, God is calling us into another season of great faith. And it wasn't like, woohoo, yeah. It was like, oh, Lord, here we go again. Here we go again. Because it's never easy for us. I've been restless, and, and I'll tell you, because God didn't wire me, and, and there's many people in the room like this, God did not wire me for mediocrity. He didn't wire me to live an average life and just to kind of ho-hum my way through as a, a leader of an organization that's wanting to do significant things in, in the kingdom of God. He didn't call me to be average. And I told my family, I said, the next season at Crosspoint is going to require great faith and complete trust in God. He opened the door. Now we're going to walk through it. 
It's time for us to walk through it. God's greatest blessings on this church have come on the heels of our most challenging seasons. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. What's true for the church is going to be true for your life. It's going to come on the heels of your most challenging season. Nothing comes easy for us, but thanks be to God, it always comes to pass. Are y'all okay out there? All right, here we go. What we're dealing with over the next six weeks, every Sunday, and in the small group environment, is not a minor subject. Uh, This is the second most important thing in your life right after have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So this is why we're doing this, because you've got to get it. You've got to walk away from the next six weeks with some direction and definition and clarity in your life of what God is calling you to. And if you're faithful in the small things, the Bible principle is he'll expand your dream and it gets bigger and it has more impact because you were faithful in the previous season. So I want to share some of the reasons that we're going to talk about God's dream uh, for your life over the next six weeks. And I want to jump right into some of that to try to give some clarity to where we're going and what we're doing. First of all, one of the reasons we're talking about it, God gave us the capacity to dream. He's the one that put that in you, okay? Uh, You didn't get it from anybody else. You got it from God. The only reason that you have the ability to dream great dreams, to have vision, to think about the future, is because you're made in the image of God. In Genesis 1.26, God said, let us make human beings in our image and in our likeness. Now, we're, we're most like our creator when we're being creative. Amen. Um, God made you. Everybody in this room and everybody watching online, God made you to be creative. And I know there's a pushback there. And some people are going, PT, I don't think so. I, I'm not a creative person. Yes, you are. God wired you that way. You're a human being. You may have suppressed your creativity, but it's there. Everybody was created with creativity in their heart. Uh, we went to a restaurant the other day, and, and uh, of course, Lennox was with us. And, and as we walked in, uh, the waitress, uh, I, I think we're at Bad Daddy's or someplace, because if we ask Lynn, where do you want to go for lunch, it's always Bad Daddy's, and he likes the milkshakes. Uh, but we walk in, and they kind of know him, and they give him a coloring sheet and a little packet of crayons. And we sat down at the table, and, you know, I never really noticed it before, but I'm watching Lynn, and the picture didn't matter to him. The lines, coloring in the lines, that didn't mean anything. He just went nuts, ballistic, on that coloring sheet. And I'm sitting there, and because I'm, you know, I'm kind of anal about that, you know. And I, it's just it's making me nervous. I'm like, oh, God, he's not even trying to color in the lines. <laughs> not even trying. Okay, I mean, it's bothering me, and he's having the best old time. And I look at Sylvia, and I said, he he hasn't learned to color inside the lines. He's not even trying. I I mean, what's going on? And she said, oh, they'll teach him that in school. You know, (laughs) don't worry about it. They'll teach that in school. (laughs) But then I got thinking about that as as it kind of wrecked my lunch, thinking, is there something wrong with my grandson? He can't color inside the lines, you know. Uh, But I got thinking about that, and and. You know, they say that the most creative minds in the world, the the artists that are, you know, their paintings are selling for the highest, most ridiculous prices in our culture today are the guys that growing up never knew how to color inside the lines. They weren't confined to everybody else's way of thinking. They thought outside the box, and that gave me some peace. (laughs) Gave me some peace, you know. I'm thinking, wow, we might have something going on here that I don't even realize, so I'm going to leave it alone because I don't want him to be average. I want him to have everything God created for him by living the dream and the plan that God has for his life. And what God, I believe, put in Linux, he put in every one of you a desire, a heart, a, a creative heart and mind to do incredible things and not live beneath our privileges as the people of the Most High God. Are y'all all right out there? Amen. You can take it or leave it, but I personally believe this is a strong statement, and I thought about it, and I erased it and deleted it and went back to it, and finally I just said I'm leaving it in because that's just who I am. But uh, I personally believe that it's borderline sinful to not live the dream that God created you for. If God has a plan for your life, and you find it out, and you push away from it, I'm telling you, I believe that's sin. When God is showing you which way you need to go and you refuse to go that way, I believe that's a problem for you that you're going to answer for on Judgment Day. God didn't put us here to be mediocre or average. He just did not do it that way. He gave every one of us the capacity to dream, and he expects us to live his plan for our lives and use the capacity that he has created within us. Secondly, the reason we're doing this is without a dream, we're dying. 
Without a dream, we're dying. Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. That's true for people, it's true for churches, and it's true for any other organizations that you can come up with. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And the reason we're always talking about it here at Crosspoint, where there is no vision in a church, the people will find another parish. Amen. I don't want to follow leadership that doesn't have any vision, no future. They're not dreaming about doing something greater for God. I I couldn't stand that. You know, uh, my wife and I have visited a lot of churches through the years. And generally, when we walk away from a church, we're going, oh, thank God for Cross Point. Thank God for Cross Point. Because when leadership is complacent and they're not striving to do something great for God, it drives me nuts. And I see all that potential and all the things that God could be doing. And God wants to bridge the gap, not just in an organization, but in your life. Don't live beneath your potential. God created you for something bigger and better than you're living right now. Don't be settled and satisfied, folks. We're going to push you over the next six weeks to lean into it. Without a dream, we're dying. Without a dream, we default into survival mode. God didn't create Crosspoint just to survive. He created us to thrive. He put the same capacity in you, and I'm going to teach you how to tap into God's plan so that you can live in the center of his will over the next six weeks and beyond. The third thing, everything starts with a dream. Everything starts with a dream. This is why we have to spend at least six weeks on it Because everything starts with a dream. Everything that has been created, somebody dreamed it up first, okay? Albert Einstein, this is a quote. He said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Imagination is more important than knowledge. That's a pretty significant statement when you consider who made it, right? Einstein's considered one of the smartest, most knowledgeable men in history, and he said imagination is more important than knowledge. In other words, Einstein believed imagination rules the world, not knowledge, but imagination, the ability to think it up. And I love this passage. Ephesians 1.18 says, I pray that your heart will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope, the dream that he has given to those that he has called. In other words, Paul says, I hope you can see something. I hope your eyes is clear, just something of the future that God has called you to live in. That's the dream. The dream is the future that God has called you to share. And as your pastor, listen, I'm I'm adamant about this and I'm passionate about it. I'm praying over the next six weeks that you'll discover your dream, a new vision for the man or woman of God that God is calling you to be. The husband, the dad, the father, the businesswoman, the business leader, the student. So yes, I dare you. I'm daring you to tap in to the bigger, the better dream that God has planned for you over the next six weeks because everything we do from this point moving forward, it starts with a dream. It starts with a plan that God has created for you. Number four, my dreams define me. My dreams define me. We shape our dreams, and then our dreams begin to shape us. If you don't have a dream, you don't have a definition in your life. One of the biggest problems in our society is identity confusion. Identity confusion. Who am I? Who am I supposed to be? Where did that come from? Where am I going? What am I supposed to be doing? Does my life matter? Is there any significance to my life? I'm telling you, God's dream, his plan for your life will define you. It will absolutely define you. And if you don't live in God's plan, his dream for you, you won't have definition for your life, and you don't know the woman or the man that God has called and created you to be. Amen? Jesus said it like this in Matthew 6, and 23. Your eye is the lamp for your body. Your eye is like the window to your soul. It lets light into your body. If your eyes are healthy, he said... If your vision is good, if it's clear, if it's bright, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, if your eyes are unhealthy, if there's no vision, if your vision is unhealthy or your eye is evil, your whole body, your whole life will be full of darkness. Your dream defines you. A great dream will define a great person. A small dream will define a small person. An evil dream will define an evil person. It's your choice. Your dream defines you. So it's vitally important to find the dream that God has for your life. If your body is full of light, if your vision is clear, then your life will be full of light. If your vision is unclear, it's it's cloudy or it's dark or it's evil, then that's the way you're going to end up living every day of your life. And God didn't create you for that. And here's one that I really want to spend a little bit more time on. Number five, a dream keeps me growing. A dream keeps me growing. Are y'all out there? Okay, I'm just trusting that you're leaning in. This is one of the main reasons I want to teach how important it is to live in the dream, the plan, the vision 
that God has for your life because having dream, having a dream keeps you growing. A dream forces you to develop skills that you don't, you don't even know you have, but they're there. Look, I've been on a learning curve since March the 17th, 2004, the day we decided to start this church. When God gave us the vision, the dream for Crosspoint, I thought I knew what I was doing, but I quickly found out that I was going to need a skill set that I had never had or used or tapped into before. And God has brought some things out of me that I didn't know I had. The most important and necessary things to build a church like this from the ground up were not visible in my life. And I'm one that can, can readily admit that. They were undeveloped, they were uh, hidden, but still part of the capacity that God had instilled in me that I didn't know I had. You don't know, listen, this is important, you don't know what you're good at until the dream pulls it out of you. And it will pull it out of you. It absolutely will. And then you go, oh, wow, look at that. I didn't know I had that skill, that spiritual gift, that ability. I've never done that before. God's dream for your life pulls it out of you and forces you to be bigger than yourself, to grow beyond yourself. Okay? At this stage of my life, I've started to believe that great people evolve out of great dreams. And let me explain that. Every biography that I've ever read about some great or brilliant mind or person that's made a difference in the world, uh, everything I've ever read about those people that our culture and our society c considers to be great, um, was, you know, they received that accreditation because their dream, their vision was bigger than their ability. In other words, they did something nobody thought they could ever do. They did something that was so far beyond their ability, and, and especially when they began their journey. Maybe they shared their dream or their vision, and somebody said, I don't think you can do that. You, you might need to aim a little lower, you know, but they defied the odds, and they did something crazy uh, out of the ordinary. When an ordinary individual goes after a great dream, they become a great person. There is no intuitively, instinctively great people on the planet, okay? Here's what I believe. I believe we're all born the same. We're all born the same way, screaming and crying, knowing nothing except how to pee and poop. We all start on the same level. You come in the world with no ability to do anything. I've come to realize we're all born ordinary people, but great people somewhere along the way attach themselves to an extraordinary dream. And in attaching yourself to an extraordinary dream, you become an extraordinary person. Just look at history, my friend. You have no idea what God could do, will do, and wants to do in your life. But over the next six weeks, we're going to help you figure it out. And I want you to aim bigger. I want you to dream bigger. I want you to stretch yourself and trust God and say, God, if you got something for my life and I'm not living in it, I'm going to surrender my life to you and I'm going to walk through an open door. I'm going to walk through an open door in Jesus' name. I want cross point to be famous for great dreamers, for visionary people who pursue God's plan for their lives. I want people to say of us, that church is full of people who didn't know any better than to believe God for an extraordinary dream that led them into an extraordinary life. They attempted great things for God. They expect great things from God. That's a church full of dreamers, visionaries pursuing God's plan for their lives. They let God stretch their imagination. They let God stretch their thinking. They dream great dreams for the global glory of God because we're going to think and believe God outside of the box, not for mediocrity. We don't want to be average. We want to be exceptional in the kingdom of God. I want my life to matter and I want it to be significant. Amen. Most of the things that control your life, you had no choice over. I call them sovereignty factors. You didn't choose who your parents are. You didn't choose when you were born. You didn't choose where you were born. You didn't choose your race. You didn't choose your, your gender. All of that was chosen for you by God. But there's one thing that you do have 100% control over. You have 100% control over how much you choose to believe God. You absolutely do. That's your choice. Believe God for a little, and you're going to have a little in your life. Believe God for more, and you'll have more in your life. You believe God for great things, and God will do great things in your life. According to your faith, it will be done unto you. My dream keeps me growing. Paul said it like this. I know I'm not yet what God wants me to be. Well, thank God Paul admits it, okay? He just puts it right out there on the table. You should admit that too, so let's practice it. I want you to repeat after me. I'm not yet 
All that God wants me to be. Now we're on the same page. We are not yet all God wants us to be. I'm not, you're not, none of us are. He goes on. He said, I'm not yet what God wants me to be. I haven't reached that goal or, or fulfilled or maintained that dream. But I keep moving toward it to make it mine because Christ made me and he saved me for this. You were saved to make a difference. He said, I know I haven't reached yet reached my goal, but there's one thing I always do. Forgetting the past and straining toward what is ahead, I focus on the goal or the dream so that I may one day win the prize that God has called me to receive to Christ in the life above. Listen, folks, you will never become spiritually mature without embracing God's dream for your life. This is the mark of spiritual maturity. I have a, a dream that's so big for my life, I couldn't possibly do it on my own. I'm going to need God's help for sure, and I'm going to need other people in my life. I'm going to need my small group, which you're going to connect with this week. I'm, I'm going to need, you know, a support system. Look, if your dream doesn't scare you, mine has been keeping me awake at night lately, okay? I'll just tell you. If your dream doesn't scare you, it's too small, and it doesn't require any faith. If you can get it done without God, it's not big enough. Amen. Six. A dream keeps me going in tough times. When Job lost everything he had, he confessed that he wanted to quit, and he shared the reason why. He said this, I don't have the strength to endure. Why, Job? He said, because I don't have a goal. I don't have a dream that encourages me to carry on. He had lost all hope. It's, it's not pain that makes you give up. It's pain without a purpose that makes you give up. Human beings can endure enormous amounts of pain, but not without a purpose. The last thing to go is hope, and it is a dream that gives us all the hope that we need to continue on. My dream keeps me going in tough times. Now, earlier in this message, I quoted Revelations 3 and 8. I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. I don't think I've ever asked you to memorize a verse for a series before, but I'm going to ask you to memorize this one. I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. Let's say it together. I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. What's the address? Revelations 3 and 8. Let's say it again. I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. The address? Look, you're going to need this verse for the next six weeks to just resonate in your spirit. When God gives you a dream, he circumstantially provides the open doors for you to make that dream a reality. Revelations 3 and 8, I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. If you say it over and over and over again this week, you'll get it and you'll hold on to it. Why do I want you to get it? Why is it so vitally important? Because during this series, God is going to open a door in your life and provide an opportunity for you that you weren't expecting to happen. I, look, I, I, you're already covered in prayer for the next six weeks. I have been praying, saying, God, show up and show our people just how powerful you are if they dream big. Show them what faith can do in their life. Show them what faith can do in their home, how that their lives can be transformed to live out your greater glory, not just locally, but globally. God, do something significant in this church. And when it happens... When it happens, because it's going to happen for you if you just lean into your faith, when it happens and you think, wow, where did that come from? God is going to come into your spirit and say, I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. Ooh, that's good. And another opportunity is going to come up, and another, and you're going to be like, what the heck is going on? Man, these doors just keep opening in my life. And God is going to emphatically declare and decree in your life, I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. Can I get a witness in the house? Amen. My wife reminded me during the break, he said, Tracy, do you realize this time last year we were landlocked? We had been landlocked for years on this piece of property. Nobody would sell. And, and all this development going on, you know, there's rumors of Target and Publix and Starbucks. Y'all better not bring no dead blame Starbucks coffee cup in this, in this church house when they open up down there. We're going to stop you at the door and give you a cross point cup and say, if you bring it in, you better bring it in incognito because we don't sell that crap here. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Okay, here we go. And everything you buy from us goes right back into ministry. That matters, people. Amen. I can tell you what they do with their money, but you can just read about that on your own, okay? But all this development going on all around us, okay, and we're going, we're running out of options here. How we, you know, everybody's wanting property. We've had people, 
We had the, the Riddle family. I don't know if you're familiar with the Riddle family. They came to us when we only had 300 foot of road frontage and said, hey, we want to buy that side over there so we can access our land behind y'all. And we're like, we're trying to buy land. We're not selling anything, right? And so we knew that they were knocking on doors and we're like, God, what are we going to do? We're growing. We're outgrowing this piece of property. We're, how are we going to maintain the vision that you put in our heart? God all along was saying, I have set before you an open door that no one can shut. <laughs> Hallelujah. And here we are a year later, and we don't have just five acres anymore. Now we got 15 acres. Amen. That is God. That is God. Do you realize that Cross Point Church on this stretch that is exploding has more road frontage than any other business on this whole property? I mean, it, it takes a while to walk it because I've been picking up garbage. Yeah, it takes a while to cover it and keep it clean. That's a God thing, my friend. Whenever I was going, what are we going to do? We're going to have, we even looked at relocating the whole thing, moving somewhere else. And God just kept saying, sit still. I got you. It's going to happen in my time and in my season. It's all going to work out. And here we are a year later, uh, a year later, further along. And God has opened a door that no man can shut. And what he does for one believer, he'll do for all believers. But you have got to walk in faith. You got to learn to walk in faith. Can I get a praise in the house for what God is doing here? I'm sorry, man. I'm so, I'm so lit here this morning. It's, it's terrible when old people use that kind of verbiage. I know it's terrible. It makes young people go, oh, don't do that. We're going after your dreams over the next six weeks. When you start getting serious about spiritual growth first, and this is what I, you can call it prophecy, you can call it uh, just a blessing from your pastor, but I'm telling you, I've been praying in this vein. First of all, when you get serious about spiritual growth, expect a lot of joy because you're going to see some miracles over the next six weeks in your life by way of open doors that you never dreamed or imagined possible before. When that happens, you're going to say, why? Lord, what is going on? And God will remind you because I've set before you an open door that no one can shut. Where, where is that verse located? Good, good. By the way, what does it say? No unity in the house, but you got it. You got it. There you go. <laughs> we'll, we'll get together on it before six weeks is over. We'll get, everybody got it right. You just weren't together. Okay, now, now next week we're going to look at how can I know a dream is actually from God. I mean, how do I know that I'm not just making this up myself? How do I know when, when it's God and when it's the taco talking or a bad burrito or whatever that might be? And how do I know when it's God? We're going to talk about that next week. We're going to help you to, to realize when God is speaking and God opens a door. You know, I, I have been down some rabbit trails before trying to force things to happen. And, and I've gotten sidetracked trying to make it happen because I didn't want to wait on God for him to open a door. So I would just kick a door down trying to make it happen. I want to save you the, the trouble. I want you to learn from some of my mistakes and not do the same thing that I did. I want this for my family. I want it for my children. I want it for my grandson. I want it for my church people. I want you to know that God is speaking, and I want you to walk away from it saying, I know that was God. It cannot be anything but God. Amen. Would you stand to your feet real quick? Man, I want to pray for you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Heavenly Father, I want this church to come alive and to feel the fire of God in their hearts and in their spirit. Lord, we've got about 300 people. It's over half right now of our church. This is going to be in small groups this week. And Father, some of them are for the very first time getting involved in a small group, about 200 of, of the people here. And I want them to dive deeper and explore more and build Christian community and faith together Lord, I've just scratched the surface, but what they're going to talk about this week is going to do so much for them. This study, Lord, that they're going to do together, I want them to go into it, God, believing, Lord, that you're, you're opening a door that no one can shut in their life. Let them walk out of it, Lord, with a community blessing, but God, with more clarity than what even they have here this morning, listening to me talk about it. Lord, I pray for that to happen. What a wonderful God you are. Lord, the Bible declares that young and old will dream. So I ask you, 
So I ask you sincerely, may young people in this church dream great dreams. May middle-aged people in the church dream great dreams. May people facing retirement still, Lord, their best days are not behind them. May they also dream great dreams. May elderly people in our church dream great dreams. Lord, if we're still alive, you're not finished with us. Make our church an embarrassment to the devil. Make Crosspoint an embarrassment to the devil. Make our lives an inspiration to others. Forgive us for small thinking and constant complaining. Father, I pray that the days ahead will be the greatest days of Crosspoint and that the months and the years ahead will be the greatest months and years for our families that are represented online and in this room. Lord, I pray that the next season that starts today, this journey, I pray the next season of all of our lives, corporately and individually, will be the best season of our lives that we've ever lived for your greater glory. And we give you praise. Sing this song. Man, it's a powerful worship song we're closing with today. Sing it from your heart. Let it resonate in your spirit. And let's believe God as we walk out of this place that we're going to dream bigger dreams. And God's plan is going to materialize in our life. In Jesus' name.